Alright, so four years ago I built the monster of a desk. It was made out of recycled wood from several other projects and was made for very cheap, about 30 to 50 bucks. This deck served me well, but as you can see, it was made from very basic butt joints, which are very weak. Basically, I want a new desk. My plan is to make a desk using extruded aluminum as a frame and to complete the rest using boards, fasteners, and some 3D printed parts. I want to make it a desk that can transition between standing and sitting, and the desk needs to be sturdy, include multiple shelves, and have a keyboard tray as a bonus. Here's my rough draft. I drafted up a rough draft on Autodesk Inventor. It's a simple desk with multiple shelves and no moving parts yet. I'm going to try to make this one first and see how sturdy it is and go from there. I went out and bought the wood and parts that I was going to need. I'm going with aspen wood because it was half the cost of maple or oak. I will be sacrificing hardness with this choice, but this is an office desk more than a work desk, so I think it'll turn out alright. I'm also going to, to give the Aspen several coats of oil polyurethane. This will help with the hardness problem. This was a bit difficult to fit in my tiny car, but I managed somehow. Next, I went to the shop to cut aluminum into the correct lengths needed for the desk. I ended up coming back here several times to cut more. That will come in later. Next, I needed to cut the wood to the proper size using a miter saw. And then I brought it inside to start adding the polyurethane coats. This part of the project was done while it was cold outside, so I ended up having to do it in the basement where I put several coats of polyurethane on and tried to use a hairdryer to remove as many bubbles as I could. It took more time to do this while it was cold outside, but I'm satisfied with, with the result nevertheless. So I bought some connectors online for the frame of the desk because they looked sturdy and I could move them up and down. Turns out, for these, I'm really not a fan. These things suck. They require multiple connections for one joint and it requires one connector on both the top and the bottom of a joint to get the assembly to feel stable. These little screws are tedious. With these many problems, I thought I could just print my own. So I printed off some easier 3D printed joints, which are sturdier because their connections are further away from each other, and this will help with bending between the desk parts. They also have a bit more clearance for me to get in and tighten them up, which is an improvement for me. So up until this point, I actually haven't shown the mechanism that will transition the desk between moving up and down. Here is an animation of it on Autodesk Inventor. As you twist the drive shaft hand crank, it will transmit to the to the drive shaft, which is rotating, a set of two bevel gears, which are going in sync. And as the bevel gears turn, go twist the Acme rod, which has a lead nut on the top of it, which is going to push the top board up and down. I'm also planning on adding a guide support rod to the side of it, which will run parallel to the Acme threaded rod for extra support. This will provide stability and will prevent any wobbling or offset as the top board is moving up and down on the Acme rod. I took the top board outside to add the Acme through hole and the parallel rod hole. At first I did the Acme holes and I used a hole saw for these. I didn't realize that there'd be so much chipping on the edges. So learning from my mistake, I borrowed some spade tool bits from a friend and cut in some holes for the support rod holes. It was a little too late for the main through holes, but they don't look too bad anyways after I clean them up. Alright, now let's get to building this thing.
At this point, I still need to put a hand crank on the drive shaft. This rod needs to be adjusted to bring the bevel gears closer and then they'll mesh together properly. I bought some shims to check the distance and printed off some spacers to lift the bearing closer to the bevel gears. But I'm starting to have a big problem. As you can see in this video, the gears are slipping past each other. Oddly enough, they're only slipping when the main board is moving downward rather than upward. They're, the gears are binding together and they keep skipping. Anyways, I need to go back to my current desk and figure out what to do next. Alright, so I did some thinking and this is what I came up with. I took apart the desk and added a stainless steel rod that will be placed concentrically inside the Acme threaded rod. You can also see in the section view where the, th the stainless steel rod is going to go. At this point, I'm going to have it be between the connecting parts as I don't want to have to reprint off all the parts. I printed off some shaft collars to try and hold the bearing gears in place. Since the shaft collars are going to be mounted onto the drive shaft, they need to be able to follow the gear as it rotates. And so I gave it this semi-circle cone which will continue to support it even as it rotates. While I was waiting for those shaft collars to print off, I went ahead and added a top shelf. It has two pedestals with screws to hold the board in place. It was way too wobbly at first, so I printed off two side supports that will help prevent the board from bending back and forth. Finally, I'm adding the keyboard tray for some extra distance away from the screen. And with this sliding block, I'm relying on the low friction of the plastic to allow for the block to move smoothly back and forth. Hopefully it's not going to make too much noise, but I bought some non-toxic silicon grease just in case. Alright, back to the drive shaft. So I had printed off all the components I needed to test that drive shaft to see if this is going to work. I set up the drive shaft, put the adjacent collars into position, and went to test it. And to my horror, as I turned the bevel gear tooth for the first time, it sheared a tooth clean off. It's times like these when you look at a failure and say, okay, now is not the time to start trying to tweak this to make it work. Now is the time to just start over from a drawing board. And so that's what I did. I went back to the drawing board. I thought about what to do next. I thought, should I actually try to tighten up those joints? Should I try adding new supports for a new structure? Was I ever going to acknowledge that I have completely dropped off the fourth shelf from the original design? Certainly not. And that's when I realized it. I thought, why the heck am I wasting my time with these helical bevel gears? Alright, so it turns out these guys apply an axial load along the shaft that they're mounted on. This causes the gears to be pushed backwards and then slipped out of meshing. And you can see for yourselves. First the forces apply to the gear, they will shift backwards, and then once there's enough room, they will twist out of alignment. This is no good. After discovering this, I went back to Inventor and drafted up some bevel gears with three times the size of teeth to help with the extra mesh tolerance. I also reduced the diameter as much as possible and limited the gear to only 8 teeth. With these corrections, I printed off the gear again and was ready to give it another try. Alright, the moment of truth! Whoa! Hey! <laughs> there we go. All right, so fresh off that success, I decided to take another look at the parallel rod. After looking at the space underneath the desk, I realized that I'd actually prefer to not use up that room for the parallel rod, and I would rather try to use some clip supports, which could provide stability while saving on space. All in all, I'm very satisfied with how the desk turned out. The frame looks pretty sturdy and clean. It holds lots of space on the multiple shelves. The dual linear actuators are pretty cool and fun design and I learned a lot from messing with these different gears. But all in all, I'm looking forward to using this in the upcoming years. All right, see you in the next video.